So, what's up, guys? So, as you've probably heard by now, there's been a shooting at a social services center in San Bernardino, California. The attack happened earlier this morning, at, uh, and as of right now, there are talks that at least uh, 14 people are dead and at least 17 wounded following Wednesday's uh, massacre that happened. Now, uh, among the dead are um, are the t are two of three suspects, and who were believed to be in an SUV about two miles from the scene. Uh, investigators exchanged shots with people with these people, and they were uh, killed. Uh, David Bowditch, who directs the FBI's Los Angeles field office, said authorities do not know if the shooting is a terrorist incident, and investigators did not release a motive for the shooting. Now, of course, I also skeptically, um, you know, I, I skeptically look at the words terrorist incident because, you know, if, if this is any sort, if this is something beyond, if this was anything other than a white shooter, uh, it, it, then they're obviously going to call it a terrorist incident. But if it's a white shooter, well, the next thing they're going to say is that they're just they were mentally disturbed, and we could go on that all the, all day. At minimum, we have a domestic terrorist type situation here. They have come prepared to do with what they did as if they were on a mission. So again, this is a situation where it's most likely not a not white. Uh, shooters in this case. It's probably someone who is a person of color or particularly of Arab descent. So, yeah, this whole thing going on has just been a tragic act, uh, a tragic act of violence that's uh, occurred, and of course this is going to play into a lot of things about, again, gun control and everything else, and I know I basically sound like a fucking, you know, broken record at this point. But I think this goes to prove that even with California's large, um, that with California's uh, um, gun laws that they currently have, that even in situations like this, San Bernardino, Isla Vista, Sacramento City, these things are going to happen regardless. And there's, as much as we want to act like there's something we can do, there's, the sad reality is, folks, Things like this happen. Shit happens. People die. I don't wish to sound cold or heartless or anything like that, but these things do happen. I do personally believe, however, after incidents we've seen recently, such as the Planned Parenthood shooting, the guy in Alabama that shot the waitress because he couldn't fucking smoke in a restaurant, which you're not supposed to do anyway, no matter where you are, and now this. I do believe... We've reached a point in America where we do need to actively look at at things personally. Guns are not the issue. It is the people that have control of these guns. And regardless of what gun laws we put out there, people are still going to get them. So how do we deal? How do we deal with this problem? That's the biggest point to put out there. And I'm one of the biggest pro-gun advocates on that you could probably get from the left. I'm a revolutionary socialist. I'm a Marxist. I'm a communist. Of course I'm going to support guns, because I believe in armed revolution. But I believe, at this point, the first world proletariat, particularly the American proletariat, or, you know, I just... I don't personally believe that Americans at this point, I'm starting to really believe that Americans may not actually be mature enough for them. We were mature enough when we broke free of Britain because we had muskets and the government had muskets. But things have drastically changed and something has really, really backfired over the last 10 years or so. And I think a lot of it has to do with blatant right-wing extremism that's cropping up. I believe it has a lot to do with the xenophobia and the global collapse of capitalism from 2008. That even still today, we are still fighting to 
you know, that the capitalist class is trying to fight for to try to keep its composure. And I think a lot of people are scared. And because of that, we see this rise that's happening in extremism and violence. Lenin put it very bluntly when he said uh, fascism is capitalism and decay. Benito Mussolini accurately put, you know, as a fascist, he accurately put it that uh, fascism should be appropriately named corporatism because it's a state of uh, a merger of state and corporate power. And America has become that. America is a has relied too heavily on corporate capitalism, or roughly corporatism, which is what capitalism inevitably becomes, especially when capitalism starts to fall into decay. It heads towards corporatism. Corporatism is the building grounds for fascism. And we're seeing that. And we're seeing this rise in violence that is... That we've never, that I don't think we've seen before. That we haven't. That, that not only that we have we not seen before, but has only been seen in a couple other countries. And usually they've done something to stop it. Whether it was the Anders Breivik shooting in Norway or the uh, attack that happened in the 90s back in Australia, a lot of these things were these incidents were taken into account and people did something about that. I'm not advocating we get rid of the guns because that would be a reactionary sentiment. But if we are going to do something about gun laws, let's have it actually be something worthwhile. And if we're going to do that, let it not apply to just the people. Let it apply to the, gov the U.S. government, the U.S. military, the U.S. police system as well. So if we end up saying, okay, no, no American is, good, is mature enough to handle a gun, that means everybody because it's not just the citizens the police do not know how do not have the accurate training or sensitivity or the maturity I'm sorry to say to accurately handle a firearm look at all the people that have been shot by police in the last couple of years uh, Michael Brown um, what, what was the, the the young kid in Cleveland um, the, the home, homeless man in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the the 22-year-old uh, Caucasian male that was shot down by police in Salt Lake City. You know, and these are just a few incidents. What about... There's so many different whatabouts. So let us, if we're going to get rid of the guns, take the guns out of the hands of not just the citizens, but take them out of the hands of the police, take them out of the hands of, of anybody that works in or for the government. Because they can't handle them either. And frankly, I don't want them to. Because if we have, if they have guns and we don't, that just leads to a bad scenario all around as well. That's what I try to impart to people when we talk about these gun issues, when we talk about these violent uh, instances that occur. And in this case, it's something we really should focus on. Now again, I just want to reiterate the fact that this was a, uh, that for, again, 14 people were shot, 17, uh, or 14 people were shot and killed, 17 were shot and injured, and out of those two, uh, 14 dead, two are are three of the of the suspects, or two are, two of those dead are two of the three suspects. Now, I don't have any more information other than that, but I did want to make that clear. I will continue to try to follow this and provide any information that I can, but let me first just say this: the reason why I am making this statement the reason why I am making these statements excuse me the reason why I'm making these statements is because I want to just say we have seen so much violence that has occurred so much gun violence and everything else that I'm frankly tired of it it's become almost mainstream at this point and not only that we give way too much fucking glorification to the people that commit these crimes and I think that plays into future violence 
and it's only go only going to continue to play into future violence. So, I will continue to follow this up. I may make a, f a video in the future, but after I'm done with this story, I am not going to be covering any more gun violence issues any longer. Unless it's something hugely drastic. But I am not going to be covering any more gun violence videos. I've done far too many in the last couple of months. There's been far too many in the last couple of years. And I'm done. I do not want to be another one of those per people that contributes to this BS. I'm tired of having to read these stories. I'm tired of basically having to sound like a broken record, having to defend guns, and even to this point have to admit that, you know what, maybe Amer to the point where my hands in the air sort of thing now is that Americans may not be mature enough for them. And that says a lot coming from someone who's, who's a revolutionary socialist and pro-gun. I'm tired of it. There's no proletariat in the U.S. anymore, really. And it's time for me and Marxists to admit that. The first world Marxists, the Marxists in the first world, sure, there's a few of us revolutionaries, but there's... But there's really not. And at this point, if this is what violence against any sort of... If, if this is what we're using our guns for... Then I then yeah I'm just done. We can't be continuously killing each other when shooting each other is not the problem. By killing other people, other people, other members of the proletariat, they're not the problem. But if that's what we're going to be using our guns for, then we're not mature enough for them. And I hate to say that, but that is my way of saying I'm done hands in the air, I'm done. I'm done covering these these particular stories. These stories are just going to continue to happen, and I can't really see myself just... I can't see myself continuously doing this anymore. I can't keep doing these stories anymore. They've become so routine that I'm better off covering the violence in one fell clump, one big clump at the end of the year than I am doing one every practically every two weeks it seems like so I'm done I'm not going to be doing any shooting videos anymore because I am tired of I'm, I'm tired of having to defend the gun issue. I'm tired of having to defend guns themselves. I'm tired of this these senseless stupid acts by stupid and crazed terrorists that can't fucking that don't fucking have the capacity to even own a firearm, much less use one. So that's why I'm saying I'm done. I'm tired of this. I'm and I don't really give a fuck. I'm tired I'm just tired of doing these videos because that it's basically just the same thing every it's just the same thing different scenario every time. It's the same thing different story. And then I all I do is end up sounding like a broken record. I'm tired. I'm done. So I'm going to instead be focusing on other issues. I'm going to still cover attacks that happen, big attacks, things that actually do matter, like issues like the Planned Parenthood thing. I will cover issues like that. I will cover the right-wing extremism and stuff like that that occurs. I will continue to uh, talk about these different scenarios that occur globally. But when they're just random, blatant acts of violence like this... I'm done with it. So, 
let me just close by saying this. To the families of the victims, my heart goes out to you. I am definitely keeping you guys in my thoughts and my prayers. And to the families of the 14 of the the 12 dead, well no, 14 dead cuz even to the family of the two suspects, I have to give some condolence cuz you've lost loved ones too. So let me address this separately. To the family of the vic of the 12 victims that were killed, my heart goes out to you. I'm sorry for your loss. And I will keep you in my thoughts and prayers. To the family of the of the two suspects that were that were killed, your kids committed an act of violence, an act of terrorism, frankly. But much but just like everybody else, you are grieving too. And I want everybody also to understand that. They're grieving too. And I'm and though they committed a brutal act, I'm sorry for your loss, and hopefully you can find you can come to terms with this in some way or another. But ultimately, let us just remember that what happened today is becoming a routine, recurring th theme that something needs to be done. And if there can be any justice that can come out of this, perhaps the families could stand with the victims' families and actually try to offer some sort of comfort and condolence, you know, and some sort of mutual, some sort of mutual conversation, some sort of mutual, uh, something mutually assuring that will somehow help to heal these wounds. And that's all I'd really like to say on this incident. So, I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Stay safe, y'all. You never really can fix my heart